The bottom line of a bank, how to build a profitability model in a bank. In essence, we always talk about eight steps for building a profitability model. And I'd like to walk you quickly through those eight steps. The first one, step one, is determine your goal. What do you want to get out of your profitability model? Do you want to have a monthly view on profitability per client or per certain product type or maybe per branch or per online versus offline channel? What is your goal, what you want? Do you want it on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, yearly basis? What is what you're trying to achieve? And if you have that view, what are you going to do with it? Please write it down as your goals before you really start thinking about the profitability model because different goals can lead to different models. Setting your goal is always step one. Step two, when, whenever you have set your goal in what you want to achieve with your profitability model, you can start designing the model. And when I say designing the model, uh, I really mean designing it on paper. So don't even get behind your screen as of yet. Take departments to my uh, products or customers or even down to my transactions. How do I create a cause and effect relationship in that model? Because only cause and effect models are the right models for profitability. Designing it on paper is a very good way to start and then go more granular in trying to de determine what kind of drivers do I need to get that cause and effect model in there. Having done the design, you can start with step three. So step two is design, step three is designing your data model. So you have designed your model, but then your data. So step three is data because you have a beautiful piece of paper where you've written down on what your model would look like. But do you have the data to actually get to that kind of model? And nine out of 10 times you will have the data, but you'll have to look for it. You have to look in what kind of system is it stored? How often is it updated? Can that updating rhythm be met with the goal that I set in step one? Which are the persons that I need to be speaking to to get that data out of there? Is there a, a way of getting the data into a staging database before you get it in your profitability model? And there are lots of questions here, but really trying to map your design model to your data is what you do in step three, determining what data is needed. And once you have done that, you can start modeling. You use a tool, uh, obviously we would like to recommend cost performance. You can use other tools as well. You start modeling your profitability model in a tool. Don't do that in Excel because Excel is going to get you completely stranded. It's going to be spaghetti. It's going to be intransparent. It's going to be very difficult. And when you start modeling, uh, that's when you really are going to connect those design and your data into a tool and uh, try to get to that final numbers that you were looking for in your goal in step one. Step four usually doesn't take the most of the time. A lot of people think that building the profitability model is the most of your time. No, it's actually the, the design and your data, that is actually is the most of the time. Once you have done it in step four, your model, you have outcomes and outcomes need to be validated. So that's step five. Step five is validate your outcomes because as good as you have been in designing, as soon as you have the outcomes, people will start complaining that the design wasn't right. And sometimes they are rightfully so because you couldn't think of everything beforehand and uh, it is an iterative process anyway. So it's very logical to do a little bit of iteration here between validating the outcomes and going back to your design. Was that the right choice that I made or not? And, and getting back to, to the modeling stuff. So changing a little bit in there. So validating is a very important step, of course. Step number five. Once you have it all validated and everybody is agreeing upon the uh, sort of results that's coming out of or at least agreeing upon the rules or design that made up those results, then you can actually start building your reports because you've probably only shared raw data, but now you want to really build the reports that go around that kind of information. So step six is building your reports and showing them to the people that actually have to work with that data. A few of those things you have already done in your validation step, but having them neat and having them available on your different reporting systems is step number six. Um, step number seven, once everybody has access to the report, you'll try to automate the process because if you do it on a monthly basis, you don't want to be stuck on doing all this work every month again and again. So we really advocate to 
automate it as much as possible. Automate your data inflow, automate the creation of a new month, automate the report building, use all the tools that you have in-house to automate that. And your cost model or your profitability model tooling should be able to help you out to, um, with that automation as much as possible. And last but not least, uh, step number eight, and step number eight is not really a step, I'll be honest. Step number eight is documentation. So make sure that everything you're doing from goal setting to design to validation, you document that is being done. Because if you walk out the building and you get hit by a bus, make sure that the person next to you is actually able to pick up on your work and continue that. Make sure that everything is documented. So that's step number eight. So to recap a little bit, step number one, setting your goal. Step number two is designing your model. Step number three, finding the data that match your design. Step number four, modeling your design and data so that you really get your results in your profitability model. Step number five is validating the outcome. Step number six is making the reports. Step number seven is automate everything that you've done before. And step number eight is document, document, document. So that's how you create the bottom line of a bank.